there's a story that's told of a priest and a cab driver who both died on the same day. And there they were standing together before St. Peter. And the priest went first. St. Peter opens the book of life, goes down, down, down. Oh, yes, here, Father, I see your name. All your documents are in order. Welcome to paradise. Come and see the place the master has prepared. Follow that angel. He looks over and he sees this angel with a cowboy hat on sitting in a pickup truck. The priest gets in the pickup truck. They go down this dirt road seemingly forever. And in the middle of nowhere is a trailer. And the, the angel says, here we are. We're all set. Father, you're going to love this place. There's nobody around. Peace and quiet. You're just going to love it. The priest said, well, this wasn't quite what I was expecting, but it is what it is. And the cab driver comes up. St. Peter opens the book, goes, oh, yes, yes, here's your name. Your documents are in order. Welcome to heaven. Come and see the place the master has prepared. That angel over there will show you where you're going. So he sees this angel in a black tuxedo standing in front of a stretch Hummer limousine. He gets into the limousine and the cab driver says, you know, I'm always used to driving other people. I've never been driven anywhere before. And he said, oh, boy, you're going to love your place. And they go down this beautiful boulevard with palm trees, big, enormous mansion. Angel gets the man out of the car, said, okay, you've got one of the best properties in heaven. And uh, cocktails at 5 o'clock by the pool, a big dinner at 5 o'clock. We're going to have some of your new neighbors. You're going to get to meet them. It's, you're just going to love, love, love this place. The cab driver was like, I just, I just can't believe this. The next day, the priest is walking along the dirt road. He goes past the mansion, and there's a big party going on. He goes up to St. Peter, and he says, you know, St. Peter, I was a priest for 50 years. Uh, I was a pretty good priest. You know, I'm not complaining. It's just I thought the accommodations would be a little nicer. And St. Peter said, Father, when you preached, people slept. When the cab driver drove, people prayed. <laughs> so... If anybody is nodding off during my homily, if you could just give them a little nudge, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> once, uh, once a year, we dedicate a Sunday to stewardship, an opportunity for all of us to think about the gifts that God has given us and how faithful are we are as stewards of those gifts. You know, this week, we just celebrated the 60th anniversary of the convening of the Second Vatican Council, the signature achievement of St. John the 23rd, and as each year rolls by, there's less and less of us in this church that have any memory of the church before the Second Vatican Council. Someone said to me recently, was the Second Vatican Council that big of a deal? Yes, it was a very big deal. It uh, was one of the most transformative moments in, in centuries as the church began to look at its mission in the world. The church had become closed in on itself, afraid of the world, kind of living more in the past than in the present. And in the council, the windows of the Vatican and the church were opened and the Holy Spirit came rushing in and almost every life, part of, of life was affected by the visions and the teachings of that council. Sixty years later, we're still trying to understand it. But the council taught us that the, the, the great gift of the church is a gift that is given to us, and we are stewards of this gift, stewards of bringing the church into the world, proclaiming the good news. Now, that work on the mission of the church, being stewards of it, is not reserved to some dark, long corridor in the Vatican. It takes place on the front line of the church, which is parishes. It's parishes where children are formed, God is worshiped, the mission of the church becomes real as the poor are cared for, the hungry are fed. It is the parish that this life takes place, and we're stewards of that great gift. You know, when we talk about stewardship, we talk about three things, time, talent, and treasure. And oftentimes when people hear the word stewardship, they immediately think, oh, watch your wallet, here comes the money talk. But but really, the greatest and most precious gift that we are stewards of is our time. Our time. What do we do with our time? How much is my time other-centered? 
How generous am I with my time? How available am I to others with my time? Where do I spend my time? And there's not a person in this church this morning that doesn't have talents. Talents that God has given you. And one of our great tasks in life is to know these talents, to use them, to be generous with them, to develop them. And that can be hard sometimes. Sometimes people will say to me, I don't really see myself as having any gifts or talents. Well, you do have many gifts. Every one of us have talents. And we're, we're challenged to, to, to know what they are and to share them. And then there's the treasure. Every one of us has been given material gifts. And how do we share these gifts with others? How do we make best use of what God has given us? And St. Thomas Aquinas once said that when we get to heaven, all that we will have is what we gave away. And it's a challenge to be faithful stewards of our time, talent, and treasure. It was just over 100 years ago, in the humblest of beginnings, that OLPH was formed as a parish, a handful of German immigrants. In fact, the first pastor, when he was appointed to Glenview, said to the cardinal, where's Glenview? Never heard of Glenview. Well, 100 years later, look what has happened to this little tiny parish. I think it's fair to say that in the Archdiocese of Chicago, most people were asked, you know, what parishes are the great witnesses to the Second Vatican Council, what are the most vital parishes, OLPH would certainly be on that short list. And that says a lot about the stewardship of those who have gone before us, that have built this remarkable community of faith. Look around this campus. You know, a typical day in Glenview starts at 6.30 in the morning with Mass. And within a couple of hours, hundreds and hundreds of children descend on this campus. In the course of a day, dozens and dozens and dozens of parishioners are studying the Word of God. They're celebrating and participating in Hearts of Fire. They're catechists preparing to teach the children in religious ed. The sharing room is abuzz with getting food for the hungry and housewares for those who need those kinds of things. Think of the mission that takes place every day of the week. That doesn't happen automatically. It happens because of a generous investment of time, talent, and treasure into the mission of this parish. The pandemic has had a tremendous impact on all of us. I missed that class in the seminary on how to pastor a parish during a pandemic. We didn't, uh, I missed that one. Um, but the pandemic, while it has been uh, in a better place, we're not so restricted anymore. No masks and social distancing. But there's an impact the pandemic has had on all of us to various degrees. And we're still in the process of rebuilding our congregation. You know, uh, each October, the diocese has what they call the October count. And uh, so every October, we count everybody at Mass, and then we compare it to the number of people that went to Mass the year before, or five years ago, ten years ago. We started this in 1990, and from 1990 to 19, or to, to, to 2019, from 1990 to 2019, we experienced a 37% decrease in the number of weekly attendees. Last May, kind of two years into the pandemic, the diocese wanted to get the, a temperature of how church attendance was going, so we all did a special count last May. That number was 41% below the pre-pandemic numbers. So there is a significant decline in the number of weekly attendees. And so it's very challenging for us to continue to welcome people to come home. Now, I wanted to think that for most people, it's just a matter of, you know, we got out of the routine of going to church, you know, we got new things happening on Sunday morning. And that's true for some. But for others, they're struggling with, where is God in my life? What does it mean to belong? How do I feel connected? Someone said to me recently, you know, Father, people don't want to go back to work, let alone go to church. Uh, there's something 
in the culture right now uh, that is uh, challenging us. But with the wisdom of the parish council and the finance council and the staff and all sorts of other parishioners, we have a very ambitious agenda to get people to come home because we're better together. And every person in a parish uh, manages and makes a difference in who we are. And so today, on the Stewardship Sunday, we praise God for the gift of this faith community. I have been marveling, beyond marveling, over the months of this pandemic, seeing how much you have kept the mission of the parish alive. And you know, when you're in a parish and your biggest uh, challenge is income you get from your offertory, and for two years we didn't take up a collection, that meant you all had to step up and you all stepped up. And today, we have weathered and faced many headwinds. One of the things that I would like to say is uh, you got this letter this week about the Catch-Up Sunday. We want to try to close the gap between our budget and the income that we currently have. And I have every confidence, I've already seen evidence of the generosity of this parish. OLPH always steps up when it needs to step up. And uh, sometimes when I talk about the finances of the parish, some will say, well, they look at all these beautiful buildings and the grounds, and they say, this parish must be loaded. It doesn't need any money. Well, we're operating at a deficit, so uh, we, we, we certainly need everyone's support. Or sometimes people say, Father, you know, I don't want my money going downtown. I don't trust what they do downtown. Well, 90% of your gifts stay right here in OLPH. And, you know, OLPH is not an independent contractor. We depend on the diocese for the school office, the seminary system, the tribunal, the office of facilities. There's many services that we benefit from by our support of the archdiocese and the larger church. So thank you again for your tremendous stewardship. OLPH has had a great past. We have an even greater future ahead of us. Well, I'm finished. Everybody can wake up and we can continue with our Mass. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us for the celebration of the Mass today. It's a blessing that you are with us. Every broadcast of this liturgy goes out to hundreds of people and hundreds of people all over the world. It's been an enormous blessing. If you'd like to support this virtual ministry of OLPH, please go to our website. You can support this ministry by going to Give Central so that we can continue to broadcast the liturgy each and every week. Thank you for your support. Most of all, thank you for joining us today. God bless you. Greetings from OLPH.